For this week's Case of the Week, I happened to be walking through the All Ceramic Department and I saw one of my uh, pet peeves, and I know the technicians are never thrilled about this situation either, so let's just take a look at what we received from uh, the dentist. We've got uh, an impression, and this is for the prescription is calling for Emax crowns on teeth number six through 11, so a pretty decent job with the impression. It's in a plastic tray, but as I go to squeeze it, it's a pretty stiff plastic tray. I can't tell if it's one of those Invisalign trays or not. Looks like a lot of doctors took the Invisalign course and then rather than doing Invisalign are using up their extra trays for crown and bridge cases. So uh, impression looks uh, pretty good and uh, let's take a look at uh, the preps here. And as we take a look at the preparations, pretty nice job done here by the doctor. You know, you'll see, and I, I see this a lot, this is one of the mistakes that uh, I used to make all the time, and I still make it sometime, but, but not as much. You can see this nice lingual margin that we have here. It's not a feather edge, it's a nice, well-developed, uh, deep chamfer or shallow shoulder margin, kind of like you see on the facial of this tooth as well. And this is what Emacs wants and needs uh, for strength. And you can see we've got a pretty good margin all the way around here. But then you can see on the tooth next to it, on this central incisor, we have that on the facial and it comes around and then it kind of disappears here uh, on the lingual. And then we have it to varying other degrees on different teeth. And when I used to try to prep freehand, I had the same issue all the time where I could get nice, uh, well-developed margins for whatever material I was using on certain parts of the teeth, but then other parts of the teeth that turned into a feather edge, and this was going to be a real weak area on the crown, and that's why I went to that reverse preparation technique where I use that round burr, and essentially we use it on the facial and the lingual, and then we just, we've broken the contacts in between the two teeth, either with that 856025 burr or with the 55 carbide burr, setting us up to be able to connect these two deep chamfers with another deep chamfer interproximally and so the area where most dentists miss is on the lingual and that's usually where these margins are underprepared and that's where I used to have a lot of fractures whether it was Empress or Emacs or some other all ceramic at the same time so if you haven't seen that go uh, to the Glidewell Dental website and check out the reverse uh, preparation technique and you'll see how I've, I've had to use depth cuts just to ensure that I can get a good margin and get enough reduction uh, on the teeth as well and then as we look at the case uh, and a couple other views that we got a little sharp, uh, you'll have to trust me when I say that sharp when I put my finger on it. You might be able to tell that that looks kind of sharp there. And we would prefer that that be, you know, rounded over a little bit. All ceramic materials like Emacs prefer to have it. But otherwise, when we look at the case, uh, things look pretty good. When we have the patient closed down, we have a couple areas where you can see we've already marked it in black. So you can see that we've got not quite enough reduction between these two teeth for Emacs. And so we're gonna have the doctor uh, come in and recontour the incisal edges of these two teeth. We've already actually done it on the model. And we still are a little bit, you know, tight on space, but we've already gone in and kind of polished off those incisal edges. And we'll let the doctor know to do that uh, in the mouth as well. So there's enough room for that um, Emacs crown in that area. In fact, had that been rounded off a little bit more, we might've got a little more reduction, but really the thing that's kind of the uh, pet peeve for me on this case is the fact that there was no uh, preoperative model of what the patient had before sent in. There was no impression taken of the temporary crowns sent in with this case as well. And so really what we have here is six through 11 have been prepped. And now one of our technicians is gonna sit down and try to design six crowns here, having no idea what the patient had before and if they were happy with it or not having no idea what the temps look like and if the patient was happy with that or not. And so they're literally just gonna have to guess here and kind of make average size crowns. They don't know how much uh, overbite to put into these teeth. In fact, the patient's almost got an edge to edge bite as we look down here. And so you can see that's gonna complicate things. In fact, it looks like this central incisor number nine is actually in cross bite, which is gonna make things more difficult. And so our technicians are having to do a lot of guessing here as to what the patient and the doctor might want. All it said was Emacs Crown 6 through 11 shade A2. And this is definitely one of my pet peeves because this leads to a lot of remakes. Or not remakes per se, but it leads to a lot of adjusts. In other words, these six crowns will be sent to the doctor. The doctor will try them in the mouth. The patient will look with a mirror and might say they're too long, they're too short. I wanted them this, I wanted them that and then they're gonna get sent back to the laboratory for an adjustment and then sent back to you again. Now we finally have the information that we needed in the beginning 
And so it's kind of a hassle for the patient, obviously. It's a hassle for you. It's a hassle for the lab. So whether or not you do a diagnostic uh, wax up, uh, if you send us a before of what the patient looked like before the preps were done and said the patient thinks their teeth are too short, let's add half a millimeter, let's add a millimeter, that's a great way to do it. If you do some temporaries that the patient really likes, you can take an impression of the temporaries, just take an alginate, pour it up, send it to us, and we'll use that as our guide. But it's really difficult to try to guess uh, how to shape anterior teeth and what length to make them so that the patient's going to be happy when we have no input. It's really nice if we can get some input uh, from you guys as well. And one last little thing on this case, and this isn't really a pet peeve, this is just kind of a little bit um, of advice. When you look at the bite registration that uh, the doctor sent in to us, um, the bite registration was uh, basically taken across from the unprepared teeth on the upper arch. And so usually we're pretty good at hand articulating that. We really don't need that. Really what we want is a bite registration that's on the prepared teeth. And so as it turns out, these happen to sit, both of these happen to sit uh, on the unprepared teeth to articulate it to the lower uh, cast. And that's really not a problem for us because these teeth do have some nice centric stops across for them. What that we prefer is that the bite registration be squirted on teeth six through 11, just six through 11, not on any of these unprepared teeth. We want the bite registration just on the prep teeth. In fact, really all it needs to do is engage the incisal third of the preps and the incisal third of the lower anterior teeth. And that's gonna be a perfect bite registration for us. We prefer not to have bite registration on these teeth because we want stone in contact with stone on the unprepared teeth. And uh, so even if a dentist sends us a full arch bite registration, we'll just trim it and put it on the preps. But we prefer that it was taken without anything between these back teeth. So uh, this will work and there might be a few occlusal adjustments, but this doctor would have been better served if rather than taking the bite registration on the unprepared teeth, we just would have squirted bite registration on six through 11, have the patient close down into it and take it out. And then you can even trim it if you want to make sure it's not contacting any of the tissue on the upper or the lower, but we'll do that when it gets to the laboratory as well. So overall, we should end up with a good result when it's all said and done, but hopefully uh, we'll guess correctly. Uh, and the first time this gets tried into the patient's mouth, the patient will be happy and it won't have to get sent back to the lab and the patient be reappointed. So if you do some advanced planning and send us a pre-op model and say the patient likes the shape of the teeth now or the patient doesn't like it, wants them shorter, longer, or if you do a diagnostic wax up, or you get some advice from the patient with the temporaries about the patient really likes the temporaries except for how pointy the cuspids are, anything that you can give our technicians, any kind of advice uh, about what the patient and you are looking for is gonna give us a much better chance of you being able to cement these restorations at the first seat appointment.